Hello, everyone, and welcome to Consciousness is Sexy. I'm your host, Patty Alfonso. And our topic for today is being comfortable with the uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I actually really, gosh, this is a skill. This is a skill to develop. Um, what is that to be comfortable with what is uncomfortable? What's comfortable? What's uncomfortable? Um, and the, the sort of, when I, when I was kind of tapping into the energy of what I wanted to play with today, what came up was this idea of our comfort zone, where we stay in an area of our life where we're comfortable. You know, things are going well, and, um, you know, maybe your relationships aren't exactly life altering and changing and amazing, but they're okay. It's comfortable. You've, you've got relationships. Maybe your job isn't really, you know, makes you want to like jump out of bed in the morning and make your heart sing, but it's a job and you're making money. And so, okay, it's comfortable. Maybe you're not making as much money as you would like to make, but it's enough, enough to pay the bills. So, you know, you're comfortable. Um, and if you want to create something really magnificent and different in your life, you're going to have to step out of those comfortable places that you've created. You know, there's that saying, um, the magic happens outside of your comfort zone. So I just want to take, I want you guys to take a minute and just look at the areas of your life where things are okay. You're comfortable, things are good, but if you're anything like me <laughs> and you're always looking to outcreate yourself and you're always looking for, for what you can have more of, create more of, be more of in the world, then you kind of have to get used to being uncomfortable because change, consciousness, isn't always comfortable. As a matter of fact, it can be incredibly uncomfortable. And I think that that's what mostly stops people from creating change in their life and from creating something different in their life because they don't know how to be comfortable with those, when those things start getting a little wonky in your life, when you start making different choices and asking for different things and then you start showing up differently in the world and everything starts to shift and change. You know, those relationships that maybe you thought were okay, Maybe all of a sudden no longer serve you. Um, maybe they're not as comfortable as they used to be. Things change, people change, you change. And the willingness to let go of things can be uncomfortable. Maybe you don't want to lose that relationship. And I'm talking not just about like your boyfriend, you know, or your girlfriend, but a friendship or a relationship with a family member that needs to shift and change. So, so go as broad as you need to, oops, with this particular topic. Um, so choosing those things that will actually contribute to creating something different in your life, that's not always a comfortable place to be. So I want to share with you a couple of tools that I know have helped me to be really, not really, to be more comfortable with the uncomfortable changes that can come with life. And look, I'm, I remember a time in my life where change wasn't comfortable at all. I actually detested it. I hated it. I didn't want to change. I just wanted everything to stay in this cute little comfortable box, right? But that cute little comfortable box wasn't what I knew was possible and available in the world. And so when I started my journey with personal development, I had to get really good at being comfortable with being very uncomfortable. So one of my favorite tools to, for this is when you find yourself in that place where Let's just, use, let's just use relationships, for example. And I'll give you guys an example of a friendship, a couple of relationships that I've had to really look at closely recently and whether or not those relationships are an actual contribution to me or not. Um, so one of the tools that I want to share with you is the one of expanding your energy out. And I talk a lot about this on the show. You're an infinite being with the capacity to perceive, know, be, and receive everything. 
right? Even that can be a little bit uncomfortable to really step into that space of being an infinite being. The thing is that when we contract our energy and, and, and make our energy small, then things can get actually really intense and even more uncomfortable. But when you are met with an energy that is uncomfortable, if you actually expand your energy out to be bigger than that uncomfortable situation or that uncomfortable energy, if you expand your energy out all the way to encompass the entire earth, all the way to the sun, all the way to Pluto and beyond and beyond and beyond, as an infinite being, you get much bigger than whatever this situation is or whatever this energy is. And it actually dissipates some of that energy and creates more space so that you can be more comfortable with that particular energy. Another one of my favorite tools to play with in, this, in these particular situations is that of asking questions. And if you've listened to my show at all, then you know I'm all about asking questions. And I'm all about the tools of access consciousness, so there you go. Um, and one of the questions that I love in these kinds of situations is, is this the change I've been asking for? This energy, this, this uncomfortable energy, this sort of like, things are different, things are changing, I'm not sure, back, forth, you know, is this the change that I've been asking for? And immediately when I ask that, my body exhales, my energy relaxes, and then I know that I can just ease into the change rather than trying to fight against it or to figure it out or to push it into something different. So you expand your energy out, you perceive that situation, you look at that energy that you know is not comfortable, and then you just ask, is this the change that I've been asking for? And then the third tool that I love in this particular situation actually has a couple of different things. So it is obviously, if you know me, it's to include your body in this. Now that may show up in a few different ways. If for me, for example, if there's an energy that's very intense that's showing up in my world, then I need to move my body. And whether for you that is a walk in the park or a run or a bike ride or whatever, that's up to you. Um, sometimes if the energy is very, very intense, then I need to go for an intense hike. Um, if it's something like that I'm walk, working through something, say, emotionally, then I need to take that to the dance floor in my pole dancing classes and move through it with the assistance of, you know, music and a specific wardrobe that triggers that energy. And that helps me to move that kind of energy. Now, you guys maybe have noticed I'm a little sniffly and my, my throat's a little um, crackly today. I actually and this is where my example is going to come in. Um, I, I, there was something that I had been asking for in my life to change. And this past weekend, I was at the SK Live retreat with Sheila Kelly. And that thing that I had been asking to change showed up in a dynamic kind of way. And I, my body got what looks like a little bit of a cold after. You know, I lost my voice, which was the first thing that happened because I was actually hooting and hollering all weekend, which is a totally different subject. But I lost my voice, but then that turned into a little bit of a stuffy nose. And I don't feel sick. I know I'm not sick, right? Because that's one of the assumptions that a lot of people go into if that there's something going on with their body is that there's something wrong. Um, but it's not that there's anything wrong. I know that it's the change that I had been asking for. And so when I came back from the retreat, I actually had to sleep. That's what my body required. And I had to honor that for my body. And so I spent a day or two, you know, just resting on the couch. Uh, I went to the park and had a very gentle walk just to get out of the, out of the house. Um, but then my body required more rest and more sleep. And it's interesting because in those times when your body is actually asking for rest and that change that you've been asking for is 
literally molecularly changing the cells in your body, sometimes that's what's required is a bit of a rest. But then our minds tend to go into the crazy, oh, but I have so much to do and I have to do this and I have to do that. Um, but if you don't honor that that's what your body requires, then you know it may turn into getting really sick. But I'm not. I just sound crackly and I'm a little stuffy, but I feel awesome because I know I have that sense that it's the change that I've been asking for. And so um, this example that I've been teasing you with is going to maybe apply um, in a way that I think will be a contribution. So I have been asking for um, different relationships, friendships, specifically with women. And I've been, I've been looking at this for quite a while. It's been quite a progression of um, becoming aware of where in me I was creating these kinds of relationship with women that weren't actually kind or nurturing. And so I was at this retreat uh, with my, I'll call them my pole dancing sisters. And we had just, we filmed a Netflix documentary for about five months about bodies and movement and, and pole dancing and all of that. So we had shared a very intimate space together um, where we got really vulnerable with, you know, what was going on with, in our lives and how we were using movement to get through that and all of that. And so I adore these women incredibly deeply. Uh, and we were at the retreat and we were in a, you know, in a little small group. And the, the task at the retreat was to communicate to the group what it is that you need from the group in order to feel comfortable and to feel safe and, and to just be present with the group. And so everybody shared what they needed. And when, I, when it came around to my turn, I shared um, that I needed soft, gentle touch. You know, and I showed them, like, if you could just touch my shoulder in this way, or if you could put your hand on my thigh in this way, but I just need to know that you're present with me in the way that I know that is when you give me this kind of touch. So in my head, I was totally clear with what I was asking for, right? <laughs> and they all listened and they all acknowledged and, and whatnot. And then um, there was this particular exercise that was very moving for me and, and something shifted and changed within me. And so my body and I were crying and releasing and I was sitting in my group and I was crying and, and letting all of this pent up energy that I had had before let it go. And I was like, no one's touching me. <laughs> What's going on? And the girls in my group, they weren't, they just weren't present with me in that moment. They were just paying attention to something else. Like there just wasn't. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And, and in that moment, I was like, okay, well, I require soft, gentle touch. Like I'm having a very vulnerable, open, life-changing moment. I'd like some soft, gentle touch right now. They can't give it to me. Okay. Who can? So I looked around at this other, this large room with over 200 amazing, magnificent women. And I noticed another group of my girlfriends and I knew that they would be able to be that nurturing energy with me. So I got up and left my group and went to that other group of women and just curled up and they, as, as I knew they would, they all just totally like huddled around me and touched me and were with me and like nurtured me and just let me sob and let me do what I was doing. And so then was the uncomfortable situation of, I left my group, right? But they weren't paying attention. They couldn't give me what I wanted, but I knew what I wanted. And if they couldn't do it, I was going to do whatever I needed to do to get it. So there were all of these energies that were up in the air. And really what I wanted to do was like, okay, I'm done with these girls. I'm just going to leave. You know, I'll go bounce and join another group. But luckily, I have another amazing friend who's like, well, why don't you try communicating with them and telling them what, what's going on for you? And that was another uncomfortable situation. And at this point in my life, I'm not someone that shies away from uncomfortable situations. So I expanded my energy out. Um, I asked the question like, is this the change that I've been asking for? And it was, 
I moved my body because I was at a pole dancing event. So we definitely danced and moved our bodies. And when I was ready, I did bring it back up to the group. And I was like, hey, and see, here's the thing you guys also is that in that moment, there was no judgment. I didn't make them wrong because they didn't give me what I asked for. I didn't make myself wrong because there was a need, you know, a desire, a need that I had. I didn't make myself wrong because I had gone off to get it somewhere else. And honestly, if there had been no one else that there that could, that could be that with me, I would have found a, found a way to give it to myself. Like, where can I touch myself gently and nurturing? You know, maybe I'll cover myself with soft pillows to create that effect. Right. Um, I forgot where I was because I got distracted with that last comment. So I approached them with no judgment, total vulnerability, barriers down. And I was like, hey, you know, and I, I said, look, I just wanted to check in. You know, I had expressed that this is what I required. And then I was kind of falling apart. And you know, what's up? Like, was I not clear? And really all of them, first of all, they all apologize and they were just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, I didn't even notice I was in my own process. I was in my own thing. I had no idea. Um, so they all apologized, which was awesome. And at the same time, so then I got the awareness like, oh, okay, they're all in their, in their own process. They actually may not be able to be with me in the way that I require someone to be with me with that kind of aggressive presence and that kindness and that nurturing, like they've got their own thing going on. So they have to care for themselves in the way that they need to care for themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. So again, I didn't make them wrong and I didn't make me wrong. Right. And I, made sure that throughout the event, if I required something, I would check in with my group. And if they were available, great. And if they weren't, great. Where else can I go to get what I require? And honestly, you guys, this brought up, this shifted and changed a pattern in me that I've been aware of and looking at, but not super clear on for like the last couple of years where I am trying to receive, trying to get something from someone that they actually can't deliver. So I keep trying to get this from that person, right? Or those people or that relationship or that job or that whatever, you can apply this to anything. So I keep trying to get it from them, but not willing to be aware that in these 10 seconds, in that moment, they can't deliver that. They can't be that. But I would still keep trying. And then it would just muck everything up because I'm asking for something that they can't deliver and they can't deliver. And then, you know, they feel wrong because they can't deliver. And I feel like the victim because no one can give me what I want. But really, I was just kind of looking in all the incorrect places. <laughs> For something and that willingness to expand my energy out, stay present with all of the energies that showed up, ask questions, make different choices, shifted that deep pattern for me that I've been that I've been looking at for the last couple of years. And so it was such a gift, such a gift to be in that situation. And after I spoke with the ladies, there was a closeness in our group, at least for me, that hadn't been there before, even though they still couldn't, you know, be what I required, there was still a vulnerability and an intimacy within our group that I hadn't really felt before. But I'm still aware of where they are and what they can and can't and what I can and can't be for them. You know, it kind of goes both ways. Um, so if anyone has any questions so far about what I've said, now would be the time to put them in the chat or pop in any comments that you may have. And I'm just going to go ahead and recap a little bit of what I've talked about. Um, so 
being comfortable with the uncomfortable. What can you be and do for you to take care of and nurture you during those uncomfortable situations that are probably the change that you've been asking for? None of those two days um, in this sort of dynamic, none of that moment was comfortable. Um, and I know that it shifted and changed, changed, it shifted and changed something dynamically in my life, so much so that my body is now um, embodying this, this change in a totally different way. Okay, so let's see. Shelly, what's up, girlfriend? She says, based on what you just shared, how do you be with the people slash family that aren't able to be with you? Meaning, I know you can get it somewhere else. However, when you're with them, do you just accept it and move on? Or is there a question that can be asked? Thank you. What a fucking awesome question. Thank you, Shelly. Yeah. Um, so are you willing to be aware of where people are in their journey and in their place? And then are you willing to just be an allowance of where they are? Now, allowance is one of the five elements of intimacy that we talk a lot about in Access Consciousness. And that's basically that um, it's that space where everyone gets to just be who and what they are in that moment. And everything is just an interesting point of view, like, oh, okay. So would you be willing to be an allowance of where that family member or person or whatever is, right? And that's like, okay, that's where they're at. What do I need to do to care for myself? This person can't, right? And no judgment there. So what do I need to do to take care of myself? Where else can I get this desire or this need met? And if there aren't any other people in your world, then I invite you to join me on my next show, which is going to be all about generative people and what that looks like and what that could be like and what it's like to ask for that to show up. Um, but if there isn't anyone else in your world that can contribute what you're asking for, then okay, body, that's my like, hi, body. Your body's your dearest, bestest friend, goes with you everywhere. Ask her or him, if you're a guy listening to this, okay, what can we do to care for ourselves in this moment? What do we require? And what amazing information to know that that person or that family, family member can't give you. Like that's, that's important information to have because then you're not going to be looking for that in them. You can actually open yourself up to have that and receive that from someone else, from the universe, from nature, from earth, from other friends, from other lovers, from other family members, from a dog, from a cat. Like I told you, like one time I needed that soft, soft, gentle touch and I wanted to be alone. I didn't want to be alone. So I didn't want to go back to like my, and this is at a different event, to my hotel room and be alone. So I wanted to be with people, but I didn't really want to be around people, like with people. I wanted to have my own space and I wanted to be nurtured. So I literally took a bunch of soft pillows and I covered my whole body and I put a blanket over myself. So I had this little cocoon, you know, and I was in the middle of, you know, at another retreat around a bunch of people. So I could hear all the people, they were all there, but I was in my own space, nurturing myself and being with my body. So I got all of my quote unquote needs met in that particular situation. So uh, is, that, is that enough? Shelly says, got it, thank you. <laughs> um, so expand yourself out, bigger, bigger, bigger than anything you have ever imagined possible. Occupy that space of an infinite being. Get bigger than any and every energy that is around, right? This is when an uncomfortable energy shows up in your universe and in your space. Get bigger. Ask, is this the change I've been asking for? 
and include your body. Now that's different for wherever you are in that particular moment, but just ask your body, okay, body, what do we need right now? What do you need? What do you require? And it could be anything from surrounding yourself in a cocoon of soft pillows all the way to an intense hike, you know, or an intense run or an intense cycling or whatever. There's a very large spectrum um, in terms of moving your body. That's really, you can include your body in a lot of different ways, but I'm talking specifically about that movement with your body or that nurturing for your body that's required. So that's it, my sweet, amazing friends. If you would like to join me live, if you're watching this in the future and you'd like to join me live to ask your questions, you can register at consciousness.sexy and you'll get information on how to join me live and I'll let you know when the next show is. I am going to be talking about generative people next time and what that is and how to invite that into your life and what that actually looks like. So hopefully you'll come play with me for that too. I adore you all so much. Thank you for being here. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.